This webinar is part of the Oracle at Oracle webinar series. Welcome to today's session. I'm Rachel Blackburn. I'm on the corporate operations team at Oracle. I'll be moderating the webinar today. In this weekly Oracle at Oracle series, we have the opportunity to hear from the executive team that reimagined Oracle. In this series of webinars, we share insights from our own journey to the cloud and demonstrate how we are using Oracle Cloud to power our own business and enable exceptional customer and employee experiences. And we'll share our learnings along the way so others can do the same in their businesses. Let's dive into today's topic. Over the course of the next 30 minutes or so, you'll hear how Oracle is able to deliver an exceptional hiring experience with Oracle HCM Cloud. Now I'll hand it over to your webinar host for today, Eileen Schwab, to introduce herself and tell you a little bit about what she does at Oracle. Thanks, Rachel, and welcome, everyone. We appreciate you joining the session, and it's truly a privilege to share our journey as we reimagined hiring and onboarding at Oracle. Uh, as Rachel said, I'm Eileen Schwab, and I sit within Joyce Westerdahl's HR organization at Oracle, overseeing the HR technology project management organization. And a, a major charter of my organization is to showcase Oracle's products to our entire workforce, over 140,000 employees globally. We also, uh, as you can imagine, we implement all of this technology and we partner very closely with our IT and product development organizations, providing what we call voice of the customer uh, feedback that helps Oracle evolve products. So we're pretty tough internal customers. Uh, this next slide, I'm sure you're all familiar with. Um, it provides our safe harbor statement. So let's delve into Oracle's move to the cloud so that you have the necessary context to understand our reimagined hiring experience. Like other companies of our size and complexity, Oracle has a myriad of complex systems and processes. We are not unique in that. <clears throat> but we wanted to move beyond just maintaining systems and really focus on innovation. Uh, so as you can imagine, we took a few steps back to just really rethink many of our approaches. Uh, we needed to build a technology foundation that enabled us to focus on our strategy and to really answer the critical questions that always face HR. We needed systems that gave us visibility into the life cycle of employment from the moment a candidate expresses interest in a job at Oracle through the cycles, the promotions, the rotations, life events, up to and including retirement or exit. So, you know, we, we really uh, were focused on this end state. And we also needed to help managers recruit top talent and provide them with the tools to develop that talent throughout their career at Oracle. So this was about, you know, shifting to the Oracle HCM cloud, and we, we upgraded our enterprise to the cloud, giving us an integrated set of solutions that scaled to meet the needs of our complex organization. We wanted it to be easy to use, uh, to provide strong reporting and analytics, and make sure it was flexible enough to support our growth and acquisition strategy. I don't know if you guys know this, but we we typically acquire on average of 12 companies a year. So that, that sort of inorganic growth is a really critical aspect of our systems uh, infrastructure and being able to support that. Our HR organization adapted our strategy as well. And we really oriented ourselves around three strategic pillars and we call these our, our big bets. Uh, and it's grounded in how we enable our employees to succeed so that our customers succeed. So our first focus is on insights that matter, which is really about quality decision making through accessible data and more predictive analytics. We're always thinking about the employee experience, so evaluating and evolving the ways that we attract, retain, and develop our talent. And today we'll talk a lot about that attract and retain piece. And then the integrated technology, which really underpins all of this. And it's the nexus of people, information, and experiences. And it all fuels our strategy. So, you know, this next slide is a quick snapshot of where we are in our journey to adopt Oracle Cloud. And as you can see, HCM is in the orange box. Um, I should back up. Our first wave of transformation was nearly 20 years ago. 
and that's when we simplified and consolidated our HR data. We went from 70 disparate systems around the globe to one single instance, you know, a single source of truth that made our HR data consistent, cohesive, and most importantly, credible. Um, and that laid the foundation then for our second wave of transformation, which started in about March of 2016. And that's when we moved to cloud HCM. And just to give you a sense, our core system processes over 10,000 manager and employee transactions each week. And in addition to that, we have several other mod modules that support critical programs, such as Taleo recruiting, workforce compensation, we just implemented goals, career, and performance about a year and a half ago. And just recently, in the January timeframe, given the global pandemic, we implemented very quickly Oracle's health and safety module. And that really facilitates COVID-19 tracking of incidents, uh, data, and it enables us to globally report. Our goal, of course, is to adopt the full Oracle HCM cloud suite. In fact, my team is currently in the throes of an Oracle recruiting in the cloud implementation and in the early stages of a map and gap on Oracle learning cloud. So uh, in about um, 18, well, I should say a year, uh, I'll probably be out talking about those implementations. Um, but needless to say, we're always working with our technology partners inside of Oracle to make the most out of our quarterly updates um, that happen throughout the year. And we're introducing new functionality and improving the user experience uh, all the time. This probably goes without saying, but transformation never stops uh, at or Oracle. And therefore, um, whenever we're doing a cloud implementation, uh, we use this iterative framework for digital transformation. I think it's a really clean way of thinking about it. Um, in the case of what I'm talking about today, the reimagined hiring experience, we worked closely with our HR and business stakeholders first to streamline the experience. And for us, that involved focus groups and, and with the key user communities. We did a lot of storyboarding to ensure that our policies, our practices, our processes, and our technologies were integrated and, and that it was easy to navigate end to end. And since we laid that groundwork well, our employees and managers were then empowered to do their work within HCM easily and autonomously. And you know, in just a bit of a sidebar here, we also have an innovative overlay that helps empower employees further, and it's called guided learning. And if you haven't learned about it, I highly recommend uh, you look into it because it, you know, it provides just-in-time instruction uh, to users. And it, you know, you can also use guided learning to to provide links out to support documentation. All of this, when well-conceived, obviously delights our, our users because it's intuitive, it's efficient, and, um, and it's automated end-to-end. -end. So I'll now move more into the details about what we did to accelerate our hiring experience. I'll give you a bit of a, about our journey, uh, some key areas that we focused on for improvement, a bit about the cloud technology that underpins this work because it's not Oracle recruiting in the cloud. As I mentioned, that's coming next March. This really laid the foundation for that. I'm gonna share some of our lessons learned, highlight our future plans, and then I'll turn it over uh, to Rachel for Q&A. So um, this initiative began as an evaluation of employee feedback on onboarding experiences. However, uh, we quickly realized that our new hire satisfaction numbers were concerning. They were hovering below 50%. So when we started to peel back the layers and ask more of the, the critical questions, this initiative uh, really exploded into a project which effectively overhauled our end-to-end -end hiring experience from requisition creation all the way through to an employee's first 30 days with our company. And through that transformation, I'll just give you the punchline now, our new hire satisfaction rate grew to nearly 90%. So we saw a 40 percentage point improvement. Not bad. So how we, how'd we do it? Um, 
First, we engaged a, a cross-functional team representing hiring and onboarding programs, and together we simplified our processes. And, and one example of that, it's a, it's a pretty, it was low-hanging fruit. Uh, we went from 13 levels of approvers on an offer, which as you can imagine, took quite a bit of time because we had a lot of people involved. We took that from about three weeks um, to less than a few days. Um, so we reduced the number of approvers in half. And depending on the country, um, you know, it, it, it went to a few days. Some countries are a little bit longer, but we're still down from three weeks to a week in, in those countries. We also streamlined and automated our process, processes. So for example, we realized uh, that in most cases, we don't have to have a human manually putting an offer pack together. We actually modeled all of that in the technology and we dynamically put an offer letter with all of its various nuances and also included uh, country specific legal employment and privacy agreements into it. And once we solidified that, we then built the framework to automatically present the offer pack to the candidate, again, without human HR intervention. And since we do at Oracle over 30,000 hires a year in about 91 countries, um, as you can imagine, this automation results in considerable time savings. Um, but I think more importantly, you know, this automated and streamlined experience is far better for our end users. And um, by end users, I'm looking at kind of three different uh, categories. So let's talk about those. For candidates, uh, we wanted to provide this positive interactive experience in one platform where it's easy to search jobs, they receive notifications, they can stay connected through the entire recruiting workflow. Um, as I mentioned, it's very easy for them to accept an offer or an offer pack. They can submit that paperwork in minutes and they can even do it from their mobile phone, which as you can imagine, um, with some of our uh, Gen X and, and millennial generations, you know, the, the need to do this via their phone is essential. And we also offer dynamic onboarding checklists. And I'll talk a little bit more about those in a second, but they're customized to the person interacting with the system. From a manager perspective, we saved a lot of time because this is one stop for hiring. We used to have, you know, several systems a manager needed to kind of track. Uh, they can review their candidate pools, offer details, onboarding statuses. They no longer have to navigate to multiple systems and remember what system does what. They have clear line of sight into the status and next steps, and they can track all of this through an interactive onboarding check checklist that is tailored to the candidate and the offer that they are making. And then HR, and you know, I can just say with absolute certainty, we, we introduced a lot of operational efficiencies with our modern and competitive practices, the, the automated offer pack and offer extension, and far you know, fewer approvals, which resulted in shorter cycle times. So this gives you a little bit of a look, it's a visual of what the experience looks like. But to summarize, we took multiple systems, we streamlined them into one platform, which I'll speak about in detail in a second. It's centralized into a one interface where they can view job postings, candidates, offers. We can create an offer in a matter of minutes. We can see the latest approvals in case we need to kind of move things along. Um, candidates can do their online offer acceptance again in minutes and there are these customized checklists not only for managers but for employees and then leaders can also check their onboarding progress and a, a, through kind of an integrated report that gives them an overarching hiring outlook if they manage a large organization so at this point we have about 70 ish percent of our global hiring volume moving through this system. And we plan to capture the remaining 25-ish uh, percent uh, to the uh, communities that were slightly more complicated. So as you can imagine, smaller hire hiring volumes, um, local language requirements, we kind of left those for our ORC implementation. So 
again, I want to I want to talk a little bit about the technology. Keep in mind, I am not um, running an engineering organization. I'm I'm on the HR side, but we do use the cloud-based front end, which we call our JavaScript extension toolkit user interface. This is um, available to all of our. Uh, customers. It is a cloud-based platform as a service tool, and it really involves this front end that it, it's seamless. It blends multiple systems and processes that are in the back end. So we worked very closely with our IT partners, our OAL uh, organization within Oracle, to leverage this pass layer to create a user-centered design. And, you know, we, we kind of did it as a proof of concept. We wanted to see what OJET would offer to our HR organization. But as you can imagine, it addressed a really important gap in our enterprise offering. Our, um, our, our IT counterparts often call this a, a transitionary application because it really serves as this interim step and it bridges the gap if your organization needs to blend multiple systems but wants to create a very integrated experience for a customer. Now in the long run, we're moving to Oracle Recruiting in the Cloud. So this was truly a transitionary app. It is 100% um, adopted uh, by the countries we rolled it out to. So it was a really, um, it was a home run in terms of adoption. It obviously simplified and standardized our work. And I was just telling Rachel, I am hot off of a call where we are working through uh, some rapid prototyping on Oracle recruiting in the cloud. And I'm, I'm proud to say that none of the work that we did with this Jet UI uh, front end interface is being thrown away. And in fact, um, when I did kind of the analysis of what is going into Oracle recruiting in the cloud, about 95% of what we did in this Jet UI accelerated hiring uh, platform, <coughs> excuse me, will be directly replicated in our ORC configurations. So it really was a stepping stone. I'm gonna take a drink of water just a second. So what were our lessons learned? <clears throat> Well, we had to move at the pace of cloud. So as all of you likely know, when you move to cloud, you're, you're in a, a system of quarterly updates. So we found that we had to embrace that mentality and challenge our assumptions, adapt our practices, constantly build and refine our processes and experiences for the future. There's a fair amount of experimentation that went into this, and I'll get into that in a second. But you know, we can't, we have to lose that mentality of this is the way we've always done it. Um, so, you know, in our organizations, we're we're sort of ruthlessly challenging those assumptions and always saying, Let's come out on the other side with better answers, better process. Let's test and keep what works. As I mentioned before, this is a user-centered design, and you know I happen to have 140,000 users, um, probably 100 a thousand, 100,000 of whom um, use this uh, this particular Jet UI application. So, you know, we we brought in hiring managers, we brought in new hires, we had them step through our process flows. We, they provided real-time feedback, and this we had to make sure that that this platform was visually appealing and that it was intuitive. And, and so there was a lot of fine tuning along the way. And as part of that, we hosted watch parties. And I cannot emphasize enough how useful these are. And they're useful in any cloud implementation. So in this case, we piloted the product with hand-selected hiring managers and, um, and candidates. And so I actually was one of these. I had a hire going on when we were in this cycle. And so I got on the line, the person I was hiring got on the line, and then we had a full team of engineers and kind of functional experts. Um, and we did a Zoom call. And this person I was hiring was a rehire. And so we could see in real time that her rehire record wasn't correct. It only had a portion of the record. And so we could literally hear the engineers on the other end of the Zoom call, clicking away, changing the code line, modifying, you know, rapidly prototyping. We refreshed the page. We had her entire rehire record available. And that notion of working collaboratively and fast 
and, and being very agile and incorporating instantaneous feedback. I just, I can't emphasize enough how important that was to us getting this Jet UI platform out in an expeditious um, way and to, you know, ensuring that we had fewer bugs to resolve after we went live. And related to that, we used an agile project management method. So we had a really strong governance model. Decisions were made very fast. We had multiple teams in this effort. We did sprints, we had a backlog. Um, as I mentioned, we released, we fine-tuned technology as we went. Uh, we actually did a, a technical go live that we didn't announce, and then that enabled us to do some of these watch parties as people applied for jobs at Oracle. So we had this kind of quiet, very choreographed phase before we announced the availability of the technology. Uh, tied to the governance model is this notion of global process owners. And I, again, can't emphasize enough that we had to have processes that had clear owners within Oracle so that we had continuity and consistency. And these were often senior leaders who were able to drive influence and when needed mandate change because as you all know any of you who touch uh, systems and HR systems specifically if you don't have that executive um, stakeholder support and an owner who stands behind it um, you do get some resistance and adoption uh, can be challenging and people go back to their old ways of doing things and we didn't shut down the old way of doing things um, for about six months and then we finally closed those windows and and drove hundred um, percent adoption uh, but having that senior leadership um, backing us up from the get-go was really, really important. And then the last bullet I think goes without saying, but communicating early, often, and proactively. Um, in our case, you know, certainly we do with, we communicate a lot with our HR team, our IT, we're connected at the hip with our IT organization. But in our case, we're also always uh, feeding product development counterparts um, information so that it influences roadmaps and enhancements. And in fact, some of the work we did here directly influenced some of the design and thinking for Oracle recruiting in the cloud. So it was really awesome in terms of um, the evolution of Oracle's product offerings, while at the same time being an amazing proof of concept for OJET. So what's next? I kind of stole the thunder. We uh, Right now we are on a critical path with HCM onboarding and ORC implementations. We have three agile program increments and we'll deliver ORC to the US, India, UK, Romania, and Philippines uh, next March of 2021. Um, and we just dispositioned our requirements. And as I mentioned earlier, about 90% of what we did here in this accelerated hiring experience OJET application will directly translate into our ORC configurations. And we're also, and I just looked at this functionality, um, exploring chatbots within um, ORC and SMS innovation. So, you know, this notion of people don't want to be behind email anymore and it's all coming in through text and they need to be able to do everything via phone. And so, you know, we're just looking at that and innovating constantly about um, how to keep pace with what our candidates, hiring managers and HR need. So we're really excited about the journey. Um, as I mentioned, we're working really closely with PD and with our OAL counterparts on roadmaps and enhancements. And I certainly am seeing the vision and I'm super excited about what the, the future holds in this space. And with that, I'm happy to take any questions, Rachel. Awesome, thanks Eileen. And we have some great questions coming in through the Q&A. If you have questions for Eileen, you can enter them there and we'll get to everything that we have time for. Um, Eileen, to start, you mentioned that the hiring process is a lot faster. Could you help everyone understand how much faster it is? Ah, uh, it's a great question. Of course, it. it depends on the user, but uh, we did do some time in motion kind of studies just to kind of see how much we were improving so that we could quantify it at a high level. And I would say the time to create a rec has been a huge time saver. It used to take, you know, I timed myself. It used to take me about 15 minutes. I, I, I kind of dot a lot of I's and cross T's and reread things three times, but so it took me about 15 minutes before and, and now it takes about 
four to five minutes. So we figure we cut that down by uh, two thirds. Um, on the candidate side, obviously they can apply much faster. Uh, we used to ask them to fill in loads of information and we whittled that down to its most essential parts. So it's, it's light, it's visual, it's modern, it's much more visually appealing. And I would say it's, it's far easier and efficient to apply. Again, I, you know, I don't know, average candidate might take a half hour. What we're finding is that Realistically, a candidate can do this in, in 15 to 20 minutes, um, maybe even 15. And I think that's even going to get faster. Again, I was just on this, this prototyping call, and Oracle is obviously a strategic partner with LinkedIn. And so we're exploring what it means to click a button and have your LinkedIn profile parsed right into um, your application. And you know, you can submit that far more quickly because you're not um, entering your experience, your qualifications, your education, your skills. So really sweet things are on the horizon. I saw it with my own eyes and I, you know, I'm very excited about what that means in terms of the quality of data coming in. Um, let's see, I mentioned, um, but I'll reiterate again, with offer approvals, you know, we went from three weeks to just a few days with cutting down the approval cycles. I can't emphasize that enough, especially for those of you in kind of bigger, maybe more bureaucratic systems. Um, just you wouldn't believe how, uh, you know, reducing the approvals to its kind of bare minimum um, adds to the efficiencies of your organization. And then the acceptance process. I also mentioned this, but um, the notion of, you know, having no HR intervention, having an automatic way to create that offer pack, deliver it, and have um, a candidate do everything online just clicking a few buttons to approve and and and, and DocuSign, it it it's huge. Uh, it, it's a matter of minutes as opposed to before. We had lots of emails going back and forth. We even had you know some zip files. I mean, there was just there was a lot of of laboriousness to the process. Awesome. And and you touched on ORC um, in the call you were on earlier today. But um, what was what was the reason that Oracle has not moved to or ORC um, to date? And I'll tack on to that. What is the timeline for the implementation? Yeah, great question. Um, we were working with PD. We had a few things that we wanted to see in the product before we took Oracle Global on ORC. Uh, we also had <laughs> To be frank, we had a lot of streamlining and simplifying to do. We were not uh, ready to uh, embrace ORC. And so what we did was we did all that upfront work and we, we started to automate it. OJET's a pretty light, you know, kind of low risk thing to do. So we wanted to make it uh, prettier and more efficient for um, the candidates while also feeding really, you know, kind of critical requirements to PD. And so that was happening uh, concurrently. And um, we made the decision, oh, last summer uh, that ORC was absolutely uh, on the horizon. Uh, we started uh, gathering our configuration requirements. We met with OAL in January of this year. Um, they familiarized us with the product. We also partnered with Oracle Consulting, uh, who'd obviously taken a number of complex uh, customers uh, onto ORC and LinkedIn HCM onboarding. Uh, so they shared a lot of their lessons learned with us as well as kind of configuration workbooks. And um, from there, uh, we re-looked at all of our um, requirements that we built into this OJET application um, and extended those requirements to include the perspective of the recruiter. And, um, and now we're in the rapid prototyping. We have three program in increments, which for those of you who don't use Agile, is a way that um, we rapid prototype, give very quick uh, feedback to our IT organization uh, to make modifications to those configurations. Then they uh, continue to evolve, adding more and more bells and whistles. Uh, by December of this year, we will finish our third program increment, and then we'll go into end-to-end -end testing, which will be the months of January and February, 
with a release, as I mentioned, to five countries in March. And the reason we didn't go big bang, the reason we didn't do global is uh, we wanted to, you know, kind of stabilize on five countries that have um, English as, uh, as the language and then uh, kind of come back around and do kind of second language uh, legal work. And so we're kind of laying that baseline or that foundation with these five countries that represent Oh, I think, you know, based on the data, and it's always changing, but the, it, it represents about 70% of our hiring volume to do those five countries, um, you know, especially inclusive of, of the U.S., India, and the U.K., um, and then, you know, we'll come back around. I think, you know, probably t tackle Canada really soon, but with the French language requirement, we wanted to give ourselves a little bit more time. Great. That's All right, so that's that. Um, yeah. So you touched on a little bit um, LinkedIn, but what yeah. other, if any, third-party integrations are being used, and can you expand on that a little bit more? Yeah, well, we're in the process of discussing that right now. You, uh, you're talking about ORC, Rachel, not the one we're looking at, not accelerated hiring experience? Just sure. to clarify. Any, any third-party um, integrations. Sure, so with the, the OJET application I talked about today, We've integrated DocuSign, and we've also created some really cool integrations within Oracle that I didn't highlight today, but have saved managers a tremendous amount of time. So within Oracle, we integrated this process to our badging um, uh, program so that, you know, if I'm applying for a job, I receive that job, my process my offer packet, um, I'm extended the offer, accept the offer, um, essentially then I am um, directed to load a, a passport picture and a, a badge is created for me and automatically sent through the mail. Um, similarly, I receive a notification that invites me to select a laptop and that's directly uh, tied to Oracle's uh, procurement organization. So um, I'm given the, the menu of laptops uh, that I have the option to select. I select that laptop and that's immediately fed to our procurement organization and the laptop is automatically sent uh, to the employees so that they can get started on day one. So those are huge integration opportunities there. We also integrate with um, you know, in, in, any sort of international assignment um, organization. So we have some integration linkages, um, higher right. I mean, down the road, when we get to ORC, uh, the integration opportunities are, are far more, you know, expanded because um, it's a less, you know, it, it, I should say it's a, an enterprise offering and, and we work with a lot of different um, uh, third parties. So like we can use e-signature or we can use DocuSign, we can use Hire Right. We can, so we're evaluating that right now. And I can't really tell you which way we're going to go um, with respect to our integrations because we're still, like I said, in the first program increment. Awesome. And how are the internal hirings handled? Is it automated and seamless like the external process? Uh, yes, it is. But we, like many organizations, we are really working on internal mobility at Oracle. So, you know, managers are, are very encouraged to um, highlight jobs uh, internally. And then, you know, uh, essentially, once you are in the um, HCM system, um, you know, your data is all integrated and seamless. And so um, you can apply for a job through AHE and, you know, we, we, it's, a, it's an internal transfer. So it's very, very easy uh, without all of the additional information that might come from an external hire. So, you know, we obviously don't have the badging and the, and the um, laptop provisioning and all of the things that we would do for an external candidate. Right. And that's how I got my job. So I can attest. Yeah. No, I think. <laughs> and there's a big thrust around internal uh, mobility right now. Awesome. And let me know if, if this is um, something that we should maybe direct to the finance team, but um, how have companies, including Oracle, um, implemented onboarding and ORC, I know we're working on it, to HCM data workflows globally and how it did they account for the differences in statutory requirements. 
um, across countries with regards to hiring paperwork, et cetera? Mm, it's a great question. And what I can tell you is that we have um, some fields within HCM um, that drive a lot of the country specific logic. We aren't there yet uh, with ORC, um, but the plan is that these fields, whether they're a legal entity or cost center, but you know these kind of uh, very important um, architectural elements within our database that indicate um, the entity in which a person um, is employed, then drives that logic throughout the system. So if I'm a, a person in uh, say Canada or in Mexico, it would know, you know, to use the local languages. Um, it would know to um, direct me to uh, a privacy information statement, the personal information, the employment agreement, et cetera, that is customized to that country. And as you can imagine, you know, we're going to be working through that here in the next um, six months with respect to uh, ORC. Um, but for the for the AHE that I just showed you, we made a design decision um, that most, I would say 80% of what you see is global uh, in, the, the, in the accelerated hiring experience. And then we have those country specific forms queued up based on uh, cost center and legal entity. Great. Um, interesting question. How effective is the hiring process in lieu of the COVID-19 pandemic with um, work from home or remote work? Mm -hmm. um, how, how are we handling that situation internally in regards to hiring? Well, I've seen hiring kind of, you know, come to a, a slowdown, um, which is which is kind of double edged. It's been wonderful because we get a lot of attention on ORC from recruiters and, and people who would otherwise be on the front lines hiring right now. Uh, so thankfully, they're lending their expertise to our um, our systems development. But what I'm seeing is that um, it lends itself beautifully uh, to work from home, because as I mentioned, we have very little um, human intervention in this process. So, you know, a, a person goes in, they comb through our jobs board, that's all done wherever they want to do it, from their phone, from their desktop at home. Um, they select a job they're interested in, they, you know, uh, fill out the um, the details that we ask, which as I mentioned, are very light. Those feed to a recruiter who reviews, evaluates whether they're a good fit, recommends them to the manager. Again, the manager can log in from anywhere at any time, see the candidate pool, select those they want to interview. They're setting up currently Zoom interviews with candidates from across the globe. Um, you know, that they're they're essentially able to um, develop that offer uh, in a matter of minutes, um, and it's sent to the, uh, the person. Uh, the person uh, reviews the offer pack, accepts, signs uh, through DocuSign. Um, that immediately comes back to the manager, and then um, it essentially feeds to a number of organizations. I mentioned badging, I mentioned procurement, all of that's being done remotely. Uh, and then um, we used to have a higher touch orientation. Um, so that's the one thing that we shut down with COVID. We had orientations in Redwood Shores, which is our corporate um, headquarters. We also had uh, one that we were spinning up in Seattle because that's a huge area for our OCI organization. Uh, we had one in Austin. So what we did is we shut down um, all communications about in-person orientations and we went to a virtual uh, orientation which we'd been doing for anyone who wasn't proximate to one of our uh, sort of hubs so to speak and so um, essentially by making you know quick code line change we were able to send everyone an invite to zoom orientations um, and as I said you know they're ready to work on day one. So it was a pretty minor COVID-19 change. I don't know that my team would say that. Actually, it was like, you know, it, it was a few days of, of circling the wagons and, and changing the coat line and making sure it was fully tested and that no one was being texted about an in-person training, or excuse me, orientation. And then once we got that resolved, everything 100% is, is virtual. That's awesome. Um, and next question. 
Given our global presence as an organization, how standardized is the recruiting process across all markets? Yeah, I'd love to tell you it's 90-10, but I think it's more like 80-20, and, and we're really pushing for it to be more like 90-10. And really where we have constraints, and I'm sure you're all well aware, is where there are legal requirements. And so at Oracle, we have a very effective centralized HR services organization. Um, and we've used a hub strategy so that you know, we have one organization in the US, Romania, um, India. And so essentially, you know, around the clock, our HR services organization is able um, to you know, support our workforce. And so we're working with them. Um, they are on the front lines of constantly innovating and transforming our HR organization to be you know, uh, bleeding edge. And so they're very involved in uh, ORC and in really whittling this down to uh, what is most essential country by country. And even, I hate to say it, but even when countries say, oh, this is a legal requirement, we're really challenging and going back and, you know, having um, sit downs with our legal team to ensure everything that is sort of in that 20%, we hope it'll be less, camp um, is truly a legal requirement because we want to get to a global standard process as best we can. And you know, hiring is tricky in that regard because there really are, you know, very specific um, requirements country by country, but we're gonna we're gonna try to get it down to its most essential parts. Great. Um, and in the roadmap to move to ORC, is AI um, in in that roadmap at all? Yeah, not at this point. We keep saying that the bells and whistles are coming. So, uh, you know, by March of next year, we, you know, I'm not going to say we're, we're implementing the minimal viable product. I think we'll have a lot of bells and whistles. I think we'll have LinkedIn profile integration. We'll, we'll certainly have different job sites for different regions or countries. I mean, we're really working through um, some very nice to haves. But in terms of AI, um, we've certainly been in um, touch with product development around the best fit, best match functionality and kind of serving up, you know, based on a person's um, education, skills, experience, you know, could we serve up jobs that are, you know, the best fit, the best match. I believe that is coming. And obviously that has huge implications for our internal mobility strategy as well, because once you get into Oracle, wouldn't it be nice to see some of those um, jobs that are on the job boards that are, you know, most relevant for your next career step. So we're talking about it. I just don't think we're going to be there in our first um March deliverable, in part because we're just trying to scope this thing for success, and we're keeping in touch with PD about, you know, when and if we're going to be ready to take on the AI functionality. Could be very quickly thereafter. I'm not sure yet. Right. It's very interesting. Um, and next question, how can automated requisition approvals be implemented? And if that's um, possible for other businesses, what are best practices or, or things to watch out for? Hmm. Automated rec approvals. I want to make sure I understand the question, Rachel. So it, how it can be built in? I think so. Um, this is a question that came in through the Q&A. And I know we've we've greatly streamlined our requisition approval process, but it's not completely automated, is it? It's not, and I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, we at Oracle still um, like to have executive oversight. We don't have any of our um, hiring kind of linked into our, our budgeting process, and that's been something we've talked about for years, and it's just, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really big cultural shift for us. So the way that we've ensured that, you know, Eileen Schwab can post a rec is that, you know, my highest level uh, VP just takes a quick look and approves that. So we've lightened that process, but we don't have automated rec approval at this point. We, we, we have it 
reduced to, you know, the, the fewest number of approvals. So we tried to make it really light, uh, but we didn't go all the way to um, approval, auto uh, approval of RACs. Now that said, if you are an Oracle customer, I highly recommend you explore this because, you know, a, a approvals are, are managed centrally um, through HCM. And, you know, I think there's quite a bit of um, leeway a customer has uh, to tailor their approvals to, you know, however light or, or heavy they want their, their process and oversight to be. So there's definitely an option for it uh, based on my understanding of, of the approval architecture within HCM. Awesome. And we had a question about the general um, capabilities of what is ORC. Could you give a brief overview? Um, uh, what is Oracle recruiting in the cloud? Just kind of yep. <laughs> the whole shebang. Yeah, so it, it's truly the front end. Um, it drives everything from, um, the, you know, the, the job sites um, and recruiters can, can customize their job sites to uh, the posting of the requisition. So managers go in, they can create their requisition. Um, it, it immediately flows to the recruiter for approval. And like I said, any other approvers that need to be uh, in the mix, um, that requisition is then posted to the external and internal job boards, all of that customized through ORC. Um, candidates can immediately go in, um, survey the, the job opportunities. If they're interested, they can um, you know, bid for the job or apply for the job. Um, as I mentioned earlier, they can import their LinkedIn profile uh, so that their skills, qualifications, experiences are all parsed to their application. Uh, we're also exploring resume parsing, which I know is you know, available for customers. We're trying to figure out if we want that to be um, part of the Oracle architecture so it can parse the resume into the application. Uh, then they apply and that immediately is fed to um, the recruiter who makes it a part of um, the talent pool for that particular requisition. Managers can go in, review the, the, the candidate pool, select those that they want to um, interview. Um, there's scheduling available uh, and the interviews are scheduled. The, I, the final candidate is identified. Um, an offer is cut for that person, goes through the approval process again, fed by the approval rules more broadly in HCM. Um, and then the person is noted as a pending worker. That pending worker then moves into our onboarding module of HCM. So that's where there's this tight integration between ORC and HCM um, that essentially uh, that record, there's continuity and consistency. And so it's fed into you know, a pending worker record. Uh, we onboard the person. There's kind of a, a 30 day you know, kind of set of checklists that um, are customized for the employee, at, or excuse me, the, the candidate, now new hire, and the manager. And um, essentially then that record is uploaded as an employee record. And my hope is that it will feed all those downstream processes that I was talking about earlier so that you know, we can have laptops provision, badges assigned, Amex cards given, um, you know, all of the right HCM roles uh, issued so that a person can log on and get their expenses tracked. Um, so it's, it's a part of the integrated HCM record. I hope that answers the question. That's a very high level cursory kind of walkthrough of the, um, of the workflow. No, I think that was great. Awesome, thank you. And um, just a couple more questions um, before we, we close the webinar here. Um, definitely a, a timely question and, and very important. Um, is there anything in the technology or in the process that's helping with inclusive hiring? Um, in terms of diversity, diversity and inclusion? You know, not that I'm aware of. It is an extremely important question. We um, have a tremendous number of programs and processes that are outside of our systems um, that, that sort of feed this systemized process, but nothing that I'm aware of that's in product. Other than obviously, we're always running, we're extracting data, we're running reports, we're 
um, we're looking at that constantly, very proactively. But you know, short of reporting, I'm not aware of anything that like a special module or screen within ORC. Thank you for answering. And, and Sundar, um, if you're still on the call, I know you asked that question, you can reach out to the email address that we'll provide um, in a moment and, and I can um, share some resources and let you know a little bit about what those other programs are that, that Eileen's referring to in our diversity and inclusion team. Um, and then just two more questions. You mentioned reporting. How is Oracle managing reporting um, in regards to the onboarding module? I think I'm understanding that right. Um, yeah, um, <laughs> so we aren't there yet. Uh, we just actually had a deep dive where we discussed uh, reporting um, and we have some really interesting efforts going on within Oracle. Maybe some of you attended Phil Janesh's recent um, leadership presentation in the same Wednesday uh, series. And if you haven't, highly recommend you tune into it. But we are in the process of moving to the cloud data platform. Uh, that will be the one place where we have completely blended data. And then on top of that, we will be using uh, OTBI. Uh, we'll be um, asking our OAL counterpart counterparts for some, you know, kind of BI publishing, uh, customized reports. Uh, so we're working through that strategy right now. Um, Oracle's really big on dashboarding and infolets, and, you know, probably some of you have those implemented. Uh, we absolutely plan to have those embedded in ORC and onboarding to um, back up, you know, our uh, global HR services organization in you know, the onboarding efforts and tracking that they do. So, you know, standard HCM uh, reporting architecture with uh, uh, OTBI and um, some customized BI reports that'll be embedded uh, and, and given to folks based on their role. So say, you know, our HR services organization would have a super user admin role. A manager would only have access to his or her areas of responsibility, that kind of thing. So we're, we're currently in the very early stages of looking at that. Awesome. And then um, last question that's in the Q&A right now. For candidate relationship management, do we plan to use um, ORC in the countries that we're rolling out to? Yes. In fact, that's one of the areas that, I mean, I hate to put words in people's mouths, but, you know, that, that is one of the areas we are most excited about. Awesome. Great. And, and um, that puts us at exactly um, 10.55. So we'll go ahead and, and wrap up. Um, thank you so much for answering all of these questions, Eileen, and thanks for a great presentation. Um, if you wouldn't mind moving to the last slide, I'll just tell everyone about um, some of the resources that we have available. So there will be a replay of this webinar as well as a PDF of the presentation deck sent out in a follow-up email um, to all those who registered and attended. Um, you should receive this within 24 to 48 hours, and the, the replay will be hosted on Oracle Video Hub. If you have any questions, um, any additional questions to what was asked here, you can reach out to this email address, oracle at oracle-contact underscore ww at oracle.com, and we will connect you with someone internally to get those answered um, or set up a meeting if it's necessary. Um, other than that, thank you all so much. We hope to see you um, virtually on the future Oracle at Oracle webinars. Have a great rest of your Wednesday. Bye, everybody.